good afternoon, morning, whatever it is for everyone around the world. Um, I'm Tasha and I'm a PhD student at University College London and today I'll be talking about the first, um, first six months of my PhD project and some of the things I've learnt on autophagy inhibition and whether it could be a therapeutic option for those with pancreatic cancer. Um, so pancreatic cancer, or pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma, has one of the worst five-year net survivals compared to other common cancers of just 7%. And you can see from the pink arrow, this is the increase in this survival from 1971 to 2015. So you can see as well as having one of the worst five-year net survivals currently, it also has one of the worst increases in, in this survival over time. And this is due partly due to the lack of treatment that has any effect or any significant effect on tumour progression. So pancreatic cancer normally grows in the head of the pancreas in a very dense and compact environment. This causes an increase in hypoxia and metabolic starvation for the tumour cells. This then causes an upregulation of a process called autophagy. And it's thought that and hypothesised that if you inhibit this process, this could cause a reduction in tumour progression. So what is autophagy? Autophagy is a, well, can be translated into meaning self-eating and can be broadly broken down into these different phases. First, you have the isolation of a membrane, which starts to cup and surround part of the cytoplasm, creating a phagophore. This then fuses to create an autophagosome, which recruits a lysosome to create an autolysosome. This then degrades its, con its contents, creating nutrients and metabolites for the cell to use. In normal conditions, this process is used for degrading damaged or aged organelles or any misfolded proteins. However, this process can be upregulated in cases of metabolic starvation and hypoxia, like is seen in pancreatic cancer. So to what extent has autophagy inhibition been tested so far in humans? Well, you've probably seen these two drugs mentioned in the media recently, hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine. These are lysosome inhibitors and prevent the fusion of the lysosome to the autophagosome. And in phase one of phase two clinical trials, with pancreatic cancer patients, there has been in some increase in survival. However, as I mentioned, these are lysosome inhibitors and not autophagy inhibitors. LC3 recycling is one way in to inhibit autophagy. LC3 can be found in the inner and outer compartment of the autophagosome. A cysteine protease cleaves LC3 from this membrane to create LC3-1. This then undergoes several ubiquitin-like conjugations to create LC32, which is then used to recruit and make more autophagosomes. Any pro-LC3 is also cleaved by the same enzyme to create LC31. This protease is called ATG4 and is important in both the, the beginning and the end of LC3 recycling. In mammalian cells, ATG4 has four different isoforms, A, B, C, and D. A previous PhD student in our lab showed that ATG4B is the most proteolytically active of the four, and any knockout causes a decrease in both size and number of autophagosomes. So what are the advantages of ATG4B inhibition? Well, ATG4B is specific to autophagy so should, therefore should have specific effects. The crystal structure of, of the protein has been identified, allowing for drug development, and a knockout of ATG4B in mice causes just inner ear development issues, so inhibition should therefore have minimal toxicity. Due to these advantages, several ATG4B inhibitors have been published. However, some of them lack specificity for ATG4B They've only, some have only been tested through computational assays and they have limited data on cellular activity. 
ATG4B inhibition has also been tested in pancreatic mouse models. The Alec Kimmelman Lab in New York have created a doxycycline inducible ATG4B dominant negative construct and then crossed it into a pancreatic cancer mouse model. In a 2018 publication, he showed that mice with no doxycycline, so normal expression of ATG4B, had a survival of just after four weeks. Any mice fed a doxycycline co constantly in their feed, so a constant expression of the ATG4B dominant negative, had a, a no significant increase in survival. However, those mice that had an intermittent doxycycline feed so the in intermittent expression of the dominant negative ATG4B had a, a significant increase in survival of nearly four times as long. However, these mice had a mosaic whole body inhibition of ATG4B and therefore the results can't be determined due to exactly whether it was the tumour itself that was inhibited or any other processes. In a more recent study of April of this year, he showed that ATG4B inhibition plus immune checkpoint blockade caused a significant decrease in tumour volume. In this case, it was just the tumour cells themselves that had the ATG4B dominant negative construct and they were then injected into the mice. However, this orthotopic injection means that there was no stromal element involved in the tumour, where the stroma is shown to play an important role in tumour progression. And in regards to the model itself, the ATG4B construct he uses sequesters and binds to all the LC3 in the cell, which is not what would be expected of an ATG4B inhibitor. So my main project aims for my PhD are to validate ATG4B as a drug target in pancreatic ductal adenocarcinoma, or PDAC, and to identify novel small molecule compounds and or protax for the treatment of PDAC. And first of all, I'll just be showing some of the things that I've done in regards to my first project aim. So I have six cell lines from a variety of different pancreatic cancer origins and mutations. K the KRAS mutation is the most commonly seen mutation in pancreatic cancer. And we have one cell line that's KRAS raw type and it instead has a BRAF mutation. First of all, understandably, I had to ensure that each of these cell lines expressed ATG4B, which fortunately they do. Then I had to ensure that the autophagy process is competent in all six of these cell lines. To do that, I used a common autophagy inducer, Taurin-1. Taurin-1 inhibits mTOR, allowing for the activation of the ALK complex and initiation of autophagy. Another drug commonly used for autophagy characterization is baphylomycin A1, which prevents the fusion of the lysosome to the autophagosome. In a Western blot of LC3, you should see this expression pattern. With taurine treatment, you'd expect to see a decrease of LC3-1 as it's being pumped in to create more autophagosomes. With baphylomycin, you'd expect to see an increase of LC3-2 as it's paused in this process here. In a combination of the two, you'd expect to see a combination of the two effects. And you can see here with all six cell lines, they seem to show the expected pattern. However, with BXPC3, there is an, a vast increase in the expression of LC3-2, indicating that this cell line, for some reason, has an upregulation of autophagosomes. So, so far I've shown that ATG4B is expressed and the autophagosomes occur in the cells. However, I haven't yet shown whether also lysosomes occur and degradation of its components and contents. To test for this, I used a common autophagy marker, P62. P62 specifically binds to ubiquitinated proteins and brings them into the autophagosome for degradation of both itself and the ubiquitinated protein. With a Western blot of P62, and taurine treatment, you'd expect to see a downregulation or a complete loss of the expression. However, when I did the Western blot on these six cell lines, after three hours of taurine treatment, you can see that in each of the cell lines that there is no decrease in P62. 
I then took one of the cell lines, PANC1, and did a dose response test to see whether higher concentrations are required to elicit response. But again, no decreases in P62. I then did a time course for double the time to up to six hours and again, no decrease in P62. Other regulators of autophagy include glucose and oxygen. By inhibiting these, you should then be able to activate autophagy. You can inhibit glucose by using ABSS starvation media and inhibit oxygen by using cobalt chloride to initiate a hypoxic response. With the PANC1 cell line, again, you can see taurine and buffalomycin, but you have E with EBSS, H hypoxia, and a combination of the two. Again, no decrease in P62 expression. However, the BXPC3 cell line, you can see that after three hours of starvation, a complete loss of P62 expression. I then completed a time course with the PANC1 cell line, and you can see that it takes 24 hours of starvation for even a slight decrease in P62 expression. So, so far I've seen that BXPC3 takes three hours of starvation to induce autophagy, but the PANC1 cell line takes 24 hours to elicit a similar response. Next, I'd like to talk about what I've done in regards to my other project aim of identifying novel small molecule compounds and or protacts for the treatment of PDAC. So as mentioned previously, there are some ATG4B inhibitors that have been published. A master student in our lab took some of these drugs and tested them on the PANC1 cell line using a luciferase release assay. In this assay, the luciferase route is released dependent on the activity of ATG4B. And she showed that ZLV-chloromethoketone ZLV and FMK9A show a significant decrease in luciferase activity and therefore activity of ATG4B. She then tested these on cell viability and showed that these drugs have no effect on the cell viability and also had no effect when combined with gemcitabine which is a common chemotherapy agent used with pancreatic cancer. One reasoning for why there's no effect with cell viability is that no autophagy induction was used during these experiments, which could mean that this, these cells don't require any ATG4B activity and autophagy to allow for proliferation. For any future drug testing, we're hoping to use PDAC3D spheroids, so that the results are as relevant to human tumours as possible. We are using ultra-low attachment plates to create these spheroids, and on average, in these conditions, they take 96 hours to form. After these 96 hours, the spheroids are resuspended to see if they remain intact and are, and are condensed spheroids. You can see with the PANC1 cell line, after 96 hours and resuspension, the spheroid stays intact. However, mia paca 2 shows complete dispersion of the cells. And SW1990 shows a fragmented response. BXPC3, however, shows a very small and, in, and intact spheroid, even after resuspension. And SU8686 and PANC1005 shed the outer layer of their cells after resuspension. I then tested cell viability of these spheroids using DRAC7. With, this, with spheroids, you expect this halo appearance where the outside of the cells are alive and the inside are dead. So PANC1 and mir 2 show the expected pattern. However, all the other four spheroids show cell death throughout the spheroid. So, so far, only PANC1 of the six cell lines shows both spheroid formation and cell viability. With BXPC3, we wanted to ensure that this lack of cell viability wasn't due to a, a, such a small size. So we increased the cell, cell seeding number to up to 45,000 cells. But even then, the cells show the spheroid shows complete cell death. So some of the conclusions that I've had from my project so far are that starvation activates autophagy after just three hours in the BXPC3 cell line and 24 hours in the PANC1. 
Z-L-3-chloromethoketone and FMK9A are potent ATG4B inhibitors, but show no decrease in cell viability when autophagy is not induced. And only PANC1 forms viable monoculture spheroids. So for the next steps in my project, when I can get back into the lab, I'm hoping to complete prolonged time course experiments of taurine 1 and hypoxia to determine if and when they induce autophagy, or what they can induce autophagy. Determine the time required for starvation-induced P62 depletion with all six cell lines, and to test autophagy competency in, and cell viability in a ATG4B knockout PANC1 which is currently in the process of being created. In regards to my other project aim, I hope to test the current ATG4B inhibitors in autophagy-induced conditions, to screen our compound libraries for any ATG4B inhibition, to test the efficacy of ATG4B protax which are currently being synthesized, and to create 3D spheroid co-cultures with stromal cells. I'd like to thank everyone in my lab, especially Agnia for her help with the project. And I'd also like to thank my funders, Pancreatic Cancer UK. Thank you.